Sonata, the Queen of the Nights aria, Der Hulleracher, from Mozart's The Magic Flute. The singer was Alexandra Kozak, and she was joined by the Morphing Chamber Orchestra of Vienna on that new release from Aparte called Concertante, a collection of opera arias followed by the Sinfonia Concertante for violin and viola, played by the ensemble's concertmaster, Yuki Wong, and its artistic director, the viola player, Tomasz Wabnicz. I'm James Jolly and welcome to this Gramophone podcast. Alexandra Kozak was in her native Poland with her husband Roberto Alanya, staying with her parents when I caught up with her recently. So we're talking Mozart and in, in many ways this takes you right back to the beginning of your career because it was with Mozart that you made your debut and I was reading alongside your mother. Yes, it was wonderful. we we'll never forget it. We sang together Le Nozze di Figaro and she was the countess. I, I was her Susanna. I was still a student. It was the, uh, the, pop, the performance of the Wrocław Opera House, and um, some of the students just participate in the um, in the show with the professional orchestra, professional singers. And of course, it was amazing, and it's so rare, so rare uh, that, that the mother and the and the daughter they can sing together. It's mostly it's like the or the daughter can't sing enough, or the mother can't sing it's too late right so it was beautiful and uh, i loved very much the role of susanna even i didn't record the aria of it i sang as well in covent garden twice each time a bit different with uh, sir charles maqueras and sir uh, antonio papano so two wonderful musicians and beautiful persons to work with and of course the queen of the night it was the aria which opened the all doors, because I always used to sing this aria or for the competitions or for the auditions. And it was kind of the passport for to go out from Poland and, and, and to start the career. And I remember with this aria, actually with both of arias, the Queen of the Night, when I, when I took part in the competition in Operalia in 2000, this is when I've been heard by Peter Mario Catona, and this is how it has started the international career. Uh, it was the only one of competition I remember I, I didn't win. I always used to have some prizes in the competitions, not there. I wasn't even in the final, but I, a few months after I got the, the letter from the Royal Opera House at home, my father told me you have a letter from London. I said, are you joking me? I do not know anybody there. It's not possible. And this is how I, how it started. That um, Mr. Katona wrote me that he heard me in the competition. I used to, I sang in the second uh, in this competition the two areas of Queen of the Night, and we'd love to know what is the future like, what are plans like, and this is how it all started. So that's why I always keep saying to the young singers, do not go for the competitions to win. The competitions are to present yourself. The, the winner doesn't mean it's the best one. Uh, it doesn't mean that you are worse. It's sometimes it's a question of just who likes what more. You can't say that the apple is better than the pear. It just depends on the taste. You just have to take the opportunity to present yourself and to meet the people. This is the most important thing in the competitions. So and the Mozart, of course, was very, very important. And I always wanted to sing this aria. And I said now, boy, I didn't sing for that many years already, but uh, let's come back to the roots. Actually, it started during the pandemic. I was close at home and we were preparing some online concert. And I said, just for fun, let's try the screen of the night because I thought I can't sing it anymore. It's too high. And even I still vocalize uh, that high. And, and we started and said, it's amazing. It's actually easier than before because no stress. Maybe you are rest and home. You don't sing for a long time. And, 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 and I said, when we had this opportunity to record the concertante, I said, why not to do the Queen of the Night? It was so important in my life. So let's have it and let's, I will leave it to my daughter once I will be not anymore here. So it will remain something <laughs> for her. So you open the album with uh, Der Hölle I mean, tell me, I mean, it's, it is probably one of the most famous coloratura arias of all time. I mean, it, it's just one of those amazing pieces. But you obviously draw from the character of the Queen. The Queen is really angry at this point in the opera and she's telling her daughter, you have to go and kill Sarastro. 
is the coloratura sort of when words fail her and she just kind of goes beyond words into this extraordinarily you know these fireworks of course it should be like this it's the best the best moment i think which is what you what gives you an idea about this era it's the milos forman uh, movie when you see Mozart uh, composing the aria and he has in imagination his mother-in-law screaming on him. <laughs> this is exactly the thing that is this angry screaming thing. Of course, when she just sometimes when you got angry like that, you just can't find the words to do, to say. You just, just I don't know, start crying or screaming or shutting the door. It's kind of that. But believe me, when I was a younger singer and 20 something and I was singing this on the stage, I didn't think about now what I have to say with this. No, you just concentrate yourself on your technique just to hit the note. <laughs> this is uh, you, of course, with the words, with the words before and with, with, the, with the, um, uh, the passages where I'm not so high. You can say what you want to say. But in this moment, it's so difficult how it's written. You have to really concentrate very much just to hit the note perfectly, just to put all the um, parts before, just to be connected with your breath, don't lose your um, impostation of the voice. It's very, very difficult. It became more difficult in our time because the tune is higher. So at the time of the Mozart, it, it, used, it, it was not the high F, it, it was lower, of course. So it was different. Absolutely right. It should be like you say, but sometimes I think in this moment, a lot of us just thinking about the technique in this moment. Because what always strikes me when I hear the aria is, you know, you hear all the all the the, the, first, the sort of the first part of the aria where each little note is pinpointed, bang on target, and then if that wasn't hard enough, when it comes back, they're all linked together, you know, so it becomes a kind of a lyrical coloratura, which must be ferociously difficult. Yes, it's very difficult, of course, because what you say very often a coloratura soprano, and you have your in your mind a light voice. For me. It shouldn't be used, this word, coloratura, for describing a voice, because you can have a lot of different voices with the coloratura. Coloratura mm. doesn't mean the type of the voice. It's the technical ability to use the coloratura, of course. So that's why it's very, very often so hard to find a singer, because mostly the high notes, you have the singer with the lighter voices, right? And that's why it's so extremely difficult to have the... The, the voice with some depth and with the heavier one who is able to sing the high notes. So a very long voice. And it, this makes this area very difficult. And of course, after, if you ha take the, the person, Queen of the Night, the first area is so difficult, so different from the second one. This is when you have the very lyrical area that you have to, you have to cheat the Tamina on the stage. You have to pretend that you are very sweet, very calm, very loving mother to give the hope, to, 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 to give the love. And then you have, of course, the revenge and so different character in the second aria. And you have only these two moments in the whole opera to show it. If you fail something, you have no opportunity to do it better, just now or never. <laughs> do you have a sort of favourite Queen of the Night on record that, you know, when you were sort of training, you thought, wow, that, that is just the perfect way of doing it you know my mother is my teacher planta Zmurkoit, and she was the queen of the night she just sang it more than 1000 shows and she for the many years during the early 90s uh in the difficult time for for our country she used to go each winter on a tour when she sang 40 45 performances queen of the night in 40 days every day, like spending, I don't know, 300, 400 kilometers in the bus in the morning. It was always during Christmas time and I was always coming to my, visiting my parents and it was always on such a high level and she never missed the note, never ever missed the note. And she was just simply perfect. There is on YouTube how she sings the Queen of the Night and she was absolutely the queen for me and uh, amazing. If she would be born in different times without the border and the, and the iron curtain, I, I'm absolutely convinced and sure she would be known everywhere. I remember she, once she was heard in Poland singing that and uh, it was a director from Berlin and he said, oh, you have to come here and to sing and it's impossible. 
and she, she just didn't get the passport. It just didn't allow her to leave. So she was really amazing. And of course, we know Edna Moser for the kind of bigger and more dramatic uh, approach to the role. So I, I like her very much as well. But my mother was as well in this direction because uh, the proof is that she started with Queen of the Night and the, her last role she took, it was Turandot when she was 60. So she passed the whole soprano repertoire. So she had the potential and she had the temperament. You have to have that temperament to do this role. So I, I would mention these two persons. So the selection of arias on this record, actually, it's, it's an interesting idea because basically you've chosen arias where you are, as it were, sort of duetting yes. with instruments from within the orchestra, hence the title Concertante, which, of course, leads ultimately to the exactly. Sinfonia Concertante on, on the album. I mean, it's a, it's a lovely idea and it, it kind of it almost sort of makes this like a, a cross between an arias record and a kind of chamber music Record. Exactly that. Exactly that. I'm, I'm very glad that you, you say it and that you, you've heard this because I have to say as well that we didn't have a conductor for the CD. It was a kind of chamber music and it, we make a music together between orchestra and the singer and the solists. So we didn't have the person who was connecting the two parts. We just had to listen to each other very well and to be together. And it, it was enormous joy just to just to concentrate on on yourself and just close your eyes and just put some some movements with your hands what allowed to, to the orchestra to see the tempo or i don't know kind of uh, how you make the phrase and you, i am a violin player so i have this movements of the right hands i was collaborating a lot with the concert master he is wonderful and exactly like that and and of, for me mozart was always very very instrumental how he approaches the voices. For me, Mozart has to be sung in, in this instrumental way, very pure, very clear, without a big vibrato. For me, this that's this, the style without portamento, without all these things that you can hide in when you sing Verismo or Puccini or Verdi. You, you can hide yourself sometimes in the big orchestra or, or something. In, in Mozart has to be clear, pure and simple. And in this simplicity, it's the, it's the, the difficulty of Mozart, that it has, to, it has to sound like, oh, I can do it as well, you know? But when you try to do it, it's impossible. So that's why I was thinking the idea of pairing the voice with the instrument, not, not a bad one. And we see that Mozart loves this because he, he used to he used to do it this this uh, instru concertante instruments, and this uh, it was very beautiful uh, like in the Mitridate area. My father is a French horn player, so I have a special love for this instrument as well. And the and the horn player he was absolutely wonderful. He wrote these cadenzas for the aria, and and it was so beautiful just to just to feel myself a part of the musicians, one of the ensemble of the orchestra. I was not the solist there. I was just was one of them. You, you, you could feel in the round the love, the, 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 the happiness, the, the, the really a huge, huge happiness which we had during this, this recording. We, we did it really with our heart and love. Quite often when you're performing these roles on stage, you wouldn't actually see the orchestra. So you wouldn't really see who you're duetting with, except exactly. you don't through the conductor. think about it. You don't think it's like, because you are performing the role, you have such something to do on the stage. You, you feel yourself, I'm the soloist, they accompany me on the stage. Here in this special thing, I just felt one of them. And it was so beautiful just to, just to, to be equal how it should be in, in Mozart. But of course, with you don't, as you say, you don't see them, you have the costume, you have your partners on the stage and you, you forget that, that you are the whole thing with the, with the orchestra, with the musicians there. We, and we see that the parts are exactly the same important in these areas for the composer. 
Now, I think I'm right in that you've performed five of the six operas on the record on stage, even if not necessarily the same role as you sing here. Oh, yes, I mean, exactly. for example, you're right. I, I mean, in, in Führung, you, you sing Constanza, but on stage you've I sang Blonde, and Blonde. I would love to sing yeah. Constanza once, still. You know? Yes, you're right. I sang Vitellia, I sang Fior de Ligi, I sang Queen of the Night. I didn't sing Zaide. Exactly, yes. Do you find as a singer-actor that Mozart is just such fun to do. There's, there's always a sort of humanity in his operas, particularly the comic operas, and they just seem so natural. You know, there's no kind of, there's nothing forced. It just seems to unfold as gracefully as the music. Yes, absolutely. And because of, of course, you, he is using the recitatives, which is like you have to speak them very often. It makes you feel almost an actor of the thing in this moment. You are not only the singer, it's absolutely right. You are an actor because it, it shouldn't be sung. It has to be said, this thing. It has, has to have the speed, the, the, the freshness. The, you have to move the plot. So absolutely right. You have both in Mozart operas. And I, I enjoyed very much, very much. Particular, I have to say this Le Nozze di Figaro and Susanna, it was something something special. But but as well, the Fior di Ligi, it, and it's so... Like today, you have such a feeling. You, you just see that nothing has changed from so many, many years. The, the feelings are still the same. You are in love. You, you, you feel this exactly the same like hundreds of years ago. And, and sometimes, of course, the, the meaning of the words, how he's making jokes and with the words, how he wants to cover some sexual things sometimes between men and women, just covering nicely with the different uh, words uh, and you, you see the genius of Mozart of course in the in, in this in these operas and could you see yourself coming back to singing Mozart on the on the stage because you've sort of moved into the verismo you're singing yeah. some of the sort of slightly heavier Verdi roles I mean you've recently done Elisabetta in Don Carlos for example or Desdemona yes I've just sung Butterfly I'm just now actually singing a lot of Puccini in the future but yes of course I just sang where was it exactly? I don't know. Now I lost myself with the pandemic. You think like you don't know where you are. But I think it was like three years ago when I sang my first Vitellia and was together with in Paris right after Falstaff, I think. Alicia. So yes, 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 absolutely. When it when I I, I would love to come back to Fior de Ligi, for example. Now even more than when I sang it for the first time already 10 years ago. It's amazing. Absolutely. I think it would be even nicer now. Because with the experience, when you took singing the, the, the more dramatic, more heavier roles, I think it would be fantastic now to sing Comescolio, just using the depth of the voice. And I think I, I try to do it as well on the CD. When you have the Vitellia aria, it's, it's very low and, and you can use more chest voice, what I just learned as well with singing Verdi or Puccini. It's opening your throat more and you are just discover actually when you're just preparing this at home with piano then you sing totally differently on the stage with the orchestra because the sounds became larger and bigger why not if i would be offered some to sing some mozart roles, I, I i i would say yes of course and do you feel singing mozart is is good for the voice i mean is it kind of a healthy healthy thing to do rather than having to sing over a huge orchestra if you have the ability to sing the mozart coming back you can find, because it, as I said, it has to be perfectly technical singing. So you can hear exactly if your voice is placed when it should be. But I wouldn't say necessarily that now it's very important that each of us have to, has to sing Mozart because it's, it's not true. It's so different. Then coming back to Puccini, you need making music totally in different way. We said the, te the vocal technique is the same, but not not very much because you need to cover your passaggio in Puccini. In Mozart, you can leave it more open, more clear. The high notes has to be totally different sound, more dark, more, more round, more cover for the, for the um, Romantis Verdi Puccini. Different when you sing Mozart or Rossini, I would put this composer closer to each other. Uh, from the technical point of view. So, so uh, it's, it depends really on the singer. I am not a very big fan of the Fach that you say you sing that, you can't sing this because each of us is different, each voice is different. You have to find what is good for you, for yourself. So somebody can feel very well singing Mozart, somebody can say it's absolutely not for me. So it doesn't mean that you are good or bad singer because you sing or you don't sing Mozart.
And here we are, the end of a almost second year now of pandemic. I mean, have you used the downtime during the pandemic to learn new, new roles or work on your technique? Or have you just taken a rest? Or I mean, how have you got through the last sort of... You know what? Actually, it's, I didn't have the time for nothing. It's crazy. I said, why, why when I work, I have a time? And now it, I just... I just first of all relaxed because it was a bit stressful the time before. I just, I've been in London singing Traviata and I said, how will we do? Everybody's closing. Here is everything open. I don't know what to do. Maybe they will close the border. I will not come at home. And it was really, really stressful the time. So when I came back, we just started to, to learn to live a normal life. So like everybody, we started cooking we started cleaning the house from the bottom to the top like everybody in the house and we we all of us were the specialists now of of dishes of the cuisine of everything possible so we spent a lot of time in the family a lot of time with with our daughter and um, i was thinking of course i will learn something new now but just didn't have the time for that and we had some online concerts so we, we prepared for this and actually you know i it was scary and it was, of course, very different than the, the last 20 years on the stage and 20 years just to go everywhere. I just felt that I, that I really didn't live my life. I was just like waiting on the airport for my ne- next plane and it was just living between the shows and waiting for, for the appearance. And now you can see I can live my normal life. And this is what ch- makes some click and, and change, I think, in the mind of a lot of artists and a lot of singers that it's something more than only being on the stage and you can really enjoy the normal life and combine the two things together so from one side it was a bit scary I, I think for the young singers as well when you find yourself without any economical help without money without contracts without any help because you have no monthly salary that comes but from another point of view and another side, it gave us some calm and some, some time to, to think over what is important in your life. So what's, what's next in your, your musical diary? I just came from Monte Carlo, as I said, when I sang The Butterfly. And now in a few days, uh, we're having a with Roberto concert together in Liège the whole Puccini program. Then I will do my debut uh, in Stabat Mater by uh, Rossini. To singing for the first time in Poland, I have a New Year's Eve concert in Warsaw as well, all with uh, French music, French operas, when I have to learn some area of some program from Thais or Louise, uh, the the most very beautiful, not very often played French opera. And then it's Traviata and my debut, Tosca, for the first time at the Met. So I used to sing this in Paris. It was cancelled because of uh, of the coronavirus. So I will make my debut in this role in New York and I can't wait for it. Closing bars of Per Pietà, Fjord Allegis Act Two Aria from Mozart's Così Fan Tutte. The singer Alexandra Kozak was our guest on this week's Gramophone podcast. And the album, Mozart, Concertante, with the Morphing Chamber Orchestra, is out now from Aparté. Gramophone podcasts are free, but if you enjoy them, then a really great way to support our work is to take out a subscription to Gramophone magazine, which is packed full of expert reviews and in-depth articles about the latest classical music releases every month. And if you head over to gramophone.co.uk slash subscribe and enter the code podcast20 in the checkout, you can even get a 20% discount off any subscription package. We really value your support. And do look out for another Gramophone podcast very soon.